Mike Heck here for MMAfighting.com, and a lot has been going on over the last 24 hours or so as it relates to July 10th and the main event for UFC 264, the trilogy fight between Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor. As you may have been noticing over the past few weeks, things have started to get a little more heated between the two fighters on social media since the bout was officially signed, but it really started to turn on Sunday night when Poirier responded to Conor McGregor's prediction of how the fight was going to end with a kick knockout by McGregor by saying, quote, that's a fun prediction at the notorious MMA. You also predicted a donation to my foundation and you and your team stopped responding after the fight in January. See you soon, July 10th, paid in full. And that led to a lot of people, a lot of fans responding to this information, calling Connor's character into question. Connor's manager, Adi Attar, responded early this morning that, there was a face-to-face -face meeting in Utah where they were trying to actually get the UFC to kick in some more money for the foundation and he called it a low move from Poirier to bring this to the public eye. And then Conor McGregor got involved and responded saying, quote, a donation, not a debt. We've been awaiting the plans for the money that never came. I do with all my donations. Know where it's going, dot for dot. Otherwise, it goes walking, as is the case with a lot of these foundations, sadly, you took the McG over the belt, shows I was right. So Poirier continues to say that McGregor's team, quote, ghosted them in getting the donation that was promised. And from there, it got a bit more intense with Conor McGregor saying, quote, you're ripped, you inbred hillbilly. Why do you wink with your ears? You effing brain dead hillbilly, 500K with no plan in place. Ye hang tight, fool. You must be new to money. The fight is off, by the way. I'm going to fight someone else on the 10th. Good luck on your old contract, kid. Cotter then said it's Mardi Gras and also responded once again to Poirier's ac accusations about the no donations by saying, my team does their due diligence to make sure every donation meets the mark. My generosity is known. You will pay with your brain for this attempt at smearing my name. Shooting ass, shelling ass. B? I'm going with B. Little B kicks from Michelle. Good luck when you're caught. You're effed. I don't even know what to say. A lot to digest here. So joining me in this venture is MMA Fighting's Alex K. Lee. What is happening here, AK? You are the prince of positivity. Can can you find us some positives in this whole thing? Hello, my friends. Uh, only, I'm going to say it, only in MMA could a charitable donation, a large sum of money going to a good cause could somehow be turned and twisted into fuel for uh, for another fight. So I, I don't know. I, I I shouldn't be surprised at this point. We should have known now that uh, now that you know fight time is kind of rolling around that uh, that this was a possibility. But I, I, you know, and now there's a lot of blame going around. Should Poirier have put this out in public? Should you know? I, I, should McGregor's team have been on top of these things? I don't know if we're taking sides here. If we need to take sides, but I will say. Uh, if, you know, McGregor's beef and his, even his team, their beef about, uh, you know, we want to know where every, you know, due diligence, we want to know every dollar spent. That's fine. I actually support that. I think I do think if you're making this kind of large donation to charity that you should uh, you should, you know, put the work in. But at the same time, if it's true that uh, Poirier's side has been trying to contact him, isn't that the situation where you can respond and get more information? And don't you have ways to to get this info if it's so important to you, which it should be if we're talking about a half a million dollar donation to a charity? And the other thing is, the other thing that kills me, Mike, is uh, I see a lot of McGregor defenders saying that, oh, Poirier, you know, again, he shouldn't have, you know, he shouldn't have put this out in public. And, and uh, and you know, you know, again, yeah, McGregor's just being smart about it. And I said, well, you know, McGregor didn't seem to care about due diligence. And he didn't seem to have a problem promoting how charitable he was in the lead up to this fight uh, and mentioning that the donation was made. And I'm sure, and, you know, retweeting all kinds of uh, uh, positive things and, and, and replying to these comments about how charitable he is. So now, now suddenly it's it's a matter of oh like well no we have we're not doing it for this reason so as usual with McGregor and a lot of high profile fighters a little bit talking about a bo both sides of his mouth here so uh, yeah so that's that's disappointing Mike but uh, again we're 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 a few months away uh, I don't know if we want to get to answering this question that we have this lovely question we have on screen here is it is the fight actually in jeopardy but uh, I suppose it has to be addressed doesn't it with McGregor saying that the fight is off. Yeah, and listen, like, like you just said, there's only a handful of people who know the answer to these questions, so it is not up to us to speculate. Social media can only give us so much information, so we don't really know what's happening behind the scenes. But if there's one thing we can say about Conor McGregor, 
is that he knows how to generate buzz. He knows how to jump on an opportunity. He knows how to sell a fight and create heat on any kind of a situation. So him saying the fight is off, first off, if he signed a contract, not sure what he can do here. He is Conor, Conor freaking McGregor. So, you know, he has a lot of power that a lot of these fighters don't have. But when you see him tweet, AK, that the fight is off, what went through your mind? Uh, well, one of the uh, well, Mike, one of the first things that went through my mind when I saw that tweet was, well, uh, when is the when is the retirement tweet coming? Because I feel like where I, I was start, I put, I said, here comes a tweet storm, which possibly will culminate in him saying, you know what, I've had enough of this game. If this is if this is how uh, you know my peers are going to be, and this is this is kind of the crap I have to deal with every time I sign up for a big fight, then I'm done with it. Thanks for the cheese, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I'll see you guys around. Uh, uh, I, I want it. I want another rematch with Floyd. I don't know. Some, something like that. So that was that was my first thought. Se- secondly, I did not. I do not think for a second that the fight is off. Though, though, it is worth mentioning this fight has not been officially announced. I mean, we we've reported it that it's uh, that it's signed. Poirier has said publicly it's signed. McGregor has said publicly it's signed. Every other outlet has 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 done their checks and you know check with their sources. So it's essentially official, but it hasn't been announced by the UFC. So if anyone wants to have like any like the slightest doubt that this might not happen. I guess, but like like you said, my co- contracts are signed. I would like to think, yes, again, that even McGregor couldn't couldn't just have uh, demand an opponent change in the situation. It's such a sellable fight for the UFC. I do not think they would want to find another opponent. Um, we've certainly we've certainly uh, have some suggestions that are already out there. Michael Chandler just tweeted. He said, uh, "You know, I can fight." <laughs> he said May fifteenth and July tenth, back to back. Let's go. So he plans to beat uh, Charles Oliveira, become the champion, and then go right into a title fight with McGregor, which I think is hilarious. Uh, and then also uh, fans, a lot of fans, of course, asking, "Is it possible that they pull Nate Diaz from the Leon Edwards fight uh, for the, that that trilogy instead?" And again, I, I think both scenarios are unlikely. I do think the fight will go through. Um, so yeah, I wasn't too concerned when I saw the tweet. I I, I don't I, w- I won't go as far as say this is a calculated, again attempt to start selling the fight. But I'm sure both guys are aware that whatever trash talk they engage in now is going to be uh, is going to pay off later. Wouldn't that be like par for the course in the Leon Edwards story over the past couple of no. years if they pulled oh, no. Nate, <laughs> put him in oh, there with no. Connor? Like that would just be like a cherry on top of the most disgusting Sunday on earth. I mean, <laughs> poor Leon just going through, yeah. like just going through all this stuff. It's wild. And ultimately AK, and I was just, and I know you sort of alluded to this I, and I was just talking to wonder boy Thompson about this because I got hit, literally hit like his live reaction to all of this. Cause he had no idea what was happening. Of course he's fighting Gilbert Burns on that same card. And you'll hear that interview on what the heck tomorrow, but he feels like cooler heads. Okay. Cooler heads may not prevail entirely, but they'll be cool enough to where this fight will happen on July 10th. And so I'm curious, like where we sit right now, do you agree with Wonder Boy that when the dust finally settles here, because, you know, we're, we're, we're approaching some dangerous territory here. We're calling character into question. We're talking about donations. We're talking about promises, like big things that factored into the first fight in a positive way. Are you confident that this fight happens on July 10th, that we see the trilogy play out on July 10th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm fairly confident about it. If I were a betting man, I'd go like 80, 20, you know, I'd say I think 80, 80% chance it happens. Uh, I do find it, I do think that him and his management need to get on the same page um, for anyone kind of keeping up with this drama in real time. Uh, uh, McGregor's uh, agent, uh, Adi Attar, also responded to Poirier's comments first, as you said, again, kind of mentioning that they met in person and then later, excuse me, responding to uh, another commenter on Twitter who was like, who just had two questions like, okay, so is it just about you guys doing your due diligence? And two, is the donation still going to go through? And, and, uh, Atari's response was very flatly. Yes. And yes. And that was before that response was before McGregor's <laughs> kind of fiery volley shot off later. So I do think they need to get in the same page with that. I, I, I think they're, uh, we've got two heads here of the same, of the same, you know, beasts that are kind of, uh, handling the situation differently. I, I'm not saying they disagree. I'm not saying their stories contradict each other, but, Clearly, they're not. They haven't maybe spoken about how to handle this publicly. Uh, I'm not even sure if you can't control how McGregor handles things publicly, but this maybe was not uh, the best way to do it. But look, it's it's drawing headlines, drawing a lot of um, drawing a lot of attention. Again, to a fight that I I don't I, I think it's a pretty big fight already. Any feel you can add to the fire, I guess, is always great. But yeah, I don't know. I think it'll happen. Like we said, con- contracts are signed. We've seen stranger things happen. Certainly, uh, that you know, <laughs> contract signed the UFC does not guarantee anything necessarily. But but in this case, I think when we're talking about a fight this this high profile, unless there's an injury or again some other reason for a guy to withdraw, I 
would like to think the UFC would not allow, you know, anyone to just say, ah, I don't want to fight this guy anymore. So yeah, strongly feel this fight still goes down. So people don't worry, get your, get your tickets or your, you know, people you buys in ahead for UFC 264. As one of the newest electees to the WWE hall of fame, Eric Bischoff has said, and very famously said, controversy creates cash, AK. So Mm -hmm. last thing, over, under, let's just say positivity, positive things are going to happen. Everything is going to go down July 10th, UFC 264. Over, under 1.5 million pay-per-view buys for this fight with all things we just learned today. How did uh, how did two fifty seven do? Do we know? Did, did we get do do we did we get a, a decent estimate on that? It was definitely uh, I recall, I would think I think over it did a million, over a million. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm seeing reported one point six. Okay. So one point six billion. So the first. Okay. So I'm uh, changing it. One one point eight. One point eight. Well, I was going to say you don't necessarily have to change it because it's possible that there's diminishing returns, right? There's no guarantee. You would you would assume that a trilogy would do better, but it's not guaranteed. Uh, and again, I don't know if this donation talk helps it or not because it's. I think it's a little silly, and I think it most makes. I don't want to say both guys. I don't think. I honestly don't think Poirier looks that bad for airing out in public. Uh, I think it makes McGregor look really bad. But maybe that's the McGregor that people like. If we're going with the with the one point eight number, I think it's a little too high. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. It's it it beats two fifty seven. But just by a bit, just just by a bit. No, maybe again between 1.6, 1.7 billion, uh, billion. Oh, they they would love that. Sorry, those are one championship numbers. Uh, <laughs> between 1.6 and 1.7 million, I don't think it quite cracks 1.8, and where it gets close to two billion. Well, it is a wild Monday indeed in the world of mixed martial arts. So keep it here at MMAfighting.com for the latest on this developing story. For Alex Kaylee, I am Mike Heck. Thank you for watching. On the road to UFC 264 on July 10th, will we see the trilogy between Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor? You're listening to the Vox Media Podcast Network.